Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Before I begin this sermon, I feel that I need to give a little bit of a disclaimer. It is a non-spoiler clause. I'm going to talk about a movie that is very relevant. You may not have seen it yet. So I just want to warn you so you can sit back and relax that everything that I'll share is in the first third of fourth of the movie, and you probably could deduce it from the trailers anyway. So non-spoiler alert finish. Wonder Woman is the story of a woman who grows up on a peaceful, pleasant, completely isolated island. She grows up training to become someone who will be able to go out and fight, training all the while to become this miraculous, amazing warrior. At the same time, her community is completely dedicated to being people of peace. They pray that the war that they are preparing for, that the fight, the battle that they will face, will never come. They pray that the sword and the lasso and the shields that they use will never be needed. That they will remain isolated, in peace, completely whole. And that lasts until the outside world breaks in, until a man literally falls from the sky and comes in to their world, bringing news of the great war, that while their island is at peace, everywhere else is at war. No sane person would tell Wonder Woman that she is going to be safe going out. And no sane preacher would tell you that you will be safe in the world. No sane preacher would read these words that we read, very difficult words, very hard words, and tell you that the Christian life is always easy. It's not. Can you give me a little bit more mic? I'm getting people who are giving me the the sign. (laughs) No sane preacher would tell you that the life of discipleship, the life of following Christ, the life of taking up your sword will be easy. We know that this, this text is part of the missionary discourse of Jesus. This is where Jesus is preparing his disciples to go out into the world. And it would be easy for me to say, that was the first century. Jesus is just preparing them for what we know that they're going to face. But we live in a different world. We live in a world where Christianity is the majority. It would be easy for me to tell you that you don't have to worry about doing hard things in the name of faith. But I know, and you know, that that's not true. That we do have to make hard decisions. That we do have to choose each day who we will follow. Because just like in Wonder Woman, there are lots of gods that compete for our attention. The gods of money, the gods of our 401k, the gods of just maintaining simplicity and peace, even if it's just a facade in our family. And so, while these words ring very harsh this morning on our ears in the gospel, and we'd like to push them away to to a different time, we know that they also bring comfort to us. Because we are engaged sometimes in a battle, not necessarily in a physical one, but in one that requires training for deep peace that requires training for deep presence, for not pushing others to the side, but pulling them in to our own islands of security, even when our own islands seem like they are also in chaos. What pushes Wonder Woman to go out into the world 
is a man who falls from the sky. And he says to her, my father told me that when you see wrong in the world, you have two options. Do nothing or go out and be the person who does something. And I've already tried doing nothing. And so she goes out. It reminds me of that that phrase that's often, that quote, that saying that's often attributed to many, many different people, so nobody really knows who said it first. But the only thing that is required for evil to prevail in this world is for good men and women to sit back and do nothing. Discipleship following Christ is hard. And so we have to train each and every week, each and every day, to be people of peace. That's what we do as a community together. Part of that happens in worship. That's what the liturgy does to us. It retrains our patterns, our natural habitat, our natural habits to be people of war. It turns again and again through the curie, through the sharing of the peace, to be people of peace. But we also need to train in our own daily lives, in our own weekly lives. We need holy friendships. We need groups that will support us so that we can go out and live these hard words of Jesus that he speaks this morning. One of the ways that we're going to do that as a church is to put more of an emphasis on our small groups for this fall. We have several small groups that meet on a regular basis, but we'd like to add three or four more groups for the fall, to meet weekly, to pray for one another, to make a commitment for eight weeks. We'll go from just after Labor Day to just before Thanksgiving, to meet together for eight weeks, to pray for each other, to study scripture together, and to form those kind of deep friendships that you need to sustain yourself in this life of following Christ. I invite you to pray about that this summer to consider whether you can commit those eight weeks or whether you can even commit to convening a group, to leading a group. We'll have trainings. We'll we'll make it easy to be able to do this. But I want to invite you to that spiritual practice of holy friendships in your life. Another way that we train for the rest of our life is by going and serving. One of the statistics that I often quote is that the most likely way that young adults stay in the church, people who are my age down to about 18, the most oftenly cited reason that they cite for coming to church each Sunday is that they went on a service trip away from their congregation, often even taking their parents with them, and had a week-long experience of serving others. That's what our young folks are going to go out and do. They're going to go to Norristown, Pennsylvania, and they're going to have an amazing experience of putting aside their own desires for the week, of taking up their sword and their shield and their lasso, their their shovel, their paintbrush, their roller, their scraper, all of the tools that have been loaded into the van already and going out and bringing peace to this world. We'll bring them up in just a minute to bless them, to send them out on their way. So if you want to prepare to stand up, we'll bring you up in just a minute. But your most important task is the task that you do, not necessarily on Sundays only, but Monday to Saturday to take up not a sword and a shield and a lasso to go out and fight for peace and justice in the world, but to take up a dry erase marker as a teacher or a stethoscope or a microscope or a computer Mm -hmm. keyboard, to take up your tools of trade and fight, (coughs) not for war, but for peace. Let's have our, our group come up so that we can bless them so that we can send them on their way. And by sending them out, we'll also encourage our own mission in the world. 
Come on up, guys. Just stand right here where I was, right in a row. Come on, Julia. <laughs> Everybody in green. Look at this wonderful sea of green that we have. All right, and if you can all turn around and face the altar so they can see what the back of your shirt says. Yeah. <laughs> The back of their shirt says, proudly serving God since 1965. Who was born in 1965? <laughs> You're younger than that. Not a one of them was born in 1965. And so they're serving not because they've been serving since 1965, but because we've been serving since 1965. Let's pray. Friends in Christ, we can, you can turn around this way, how about that? <laughs> Friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we send these young people to Norristown, Pennsylvania to serve in work camp. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory and all creation praises you. Bless those who go out from here and labor in Norristown. Prosper the work of their hands. Bless those who receive them and the fruits of their labor. And may those who are sent receive blessing in return. May they use their gifts and share to be signs of your love to all people. To you, O God, be the glory through your honor, Jesus Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You guys are wonder people. You are wonder women and wonder men who are sent out into the world to bear the sword of peace and justice. Go, in Jesus' name. Amen.